This one here, we found a little spot in it, pieces missing, and the uh, feels a little sharp. So we'll get a good used one here. Sweet tool. There we go. Works like a champ every time. Pulls them off with no damage. And this one doesn't appear to have that same spot on it, so I think we made a good call. It's a little not as sharp. Nice. So, yeah, we'll go with that one. All right. Cool. We're going to disassemble the heads and uh, valve job them. So we're going to show you guys how we do that. These are uh, fairly clean. We're going to take them apart and go ahead and cut the seats so we have a fresh valve job. You can see right here, you see how these springs have space between the two top coils? Mm -hmm. You see this one's on upside down? Yep. Yeah, so you want to watch stuff like that. You know, oh. Always make sure you have the uh, proper spacing. Uh, this can cause an issue putting the springs on upside down, so we'll correct all that stuff. But we'll go ahead and get this apart. And you have your two little keepers here. These are the locks that hold the uh, retainer to the valve. They're like a wedge shape, and then they have three grooves that mate to the grooves in the valve stem. We'll pull that off. We have the retainer, and then we have our spring. So. These are in really nice shape. A lot of times you'll Try to take them off and the keepers will get stuck in the retainers and that's a good sign that the, the motor's been run really hard so we're looking good here another sign is the uh when you go to pull the valves out of the heads you want to be real careful to make sure that there's no resistance because these can get sharp sometimes from the keepers riding in them and it'll damage the valve guide so you want to make sure it pulls freely through the guide and if you run into a situation where it doesn't, take a little file and just, you know, rotate the valve and file that. This valve's stuck, so that's definitely an issue. Try to get that out of there. So. Yeah, these, uh, well, they're pretty dirty. They feel like they got sand on them, so. Wow. We'll clean everything up and uh, make it fresh. I don't want any kind of sand in there because these are actually made out of brass or bronze and they wear pretty quick if they get any kind of uh, grime or dirt in there. So. Gotcha. so that's what we're looking for. We're going to go ahead and take and cut the seats next, do a little valve job. We'll cut the seats and we'll reface the valves and then we'll lap them in and reassemble the heads. Not bad.
This is why it's sometimes not a good idea to lap valves in. You'll see that it's cleaned that whole side of the valve. Yep. And this side's not even touched yet. Wow. So that would have been a, you know, a dead miss. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a nice machine to have. Even as tough as Volkswagen's are, you still have to, you know, do the... valve seats now uh, we reface the valves and now we're gonna make the seat true and then we can lap it in and we'll have a good seal so we're just gonna put a 45 on these uh, I'm not gonna get too carried away I'm just the fits down in here our uh, tool for this went bad so we're using an impact wrench it seems to work okay, as long as you don't let it beat too hard. Get it spinning and it works pretty well. Touching on the one side and not over here. Yep. That's oh, another seat that would have never you know, run properly. <clears throat> That's why you can't always just lap the valves in. You know, a lot of times there's a little bit of a distortion in the seat or the, the valve's not quite flat anymore. See them there. Looking good. It took a while to get it. Yeah. That one was in need of some love in there. <laughs> what is that tool called? Dog grinding right, tool. These are the pilots to go in the guide. Okay. That's the uh, valve seat cutting tool and this is the valve repacer. All right, so what do you have there? This is valve lapping compound. It's a little, like, gritty. It's water-based. You don't want to get too much on there because if it gets in the guide again, it will cause havoc. This is going to establish a seat. And generally, you want the seat to be at the top of the valve. You can see that line there. That represents the seat. Nice. Right at the top where it's supposed to be. It's all in the valve job, brother. It really is. Yeah. Scooter used to do valve jobs all the time. And 
we went up to California one year and Clyde, you know, basically was in a good mood and let him work with him. That's cool. And taught Scooter how to do a valve job, you know, how to shape the seat and, and uh, my car was like a 1380 car and we came back and did a valve job line on a 13 -0. Almost a full second. See the gray, gray line in there where it made it. It's not shiny anymore. Mm -hmm. You can do the one that's not wrapped in over here. All right, what are we doing? We're going to assemble this head. I'm going to show you how to do this one, and then you're going to do the next one. All right, cool. Right, so you want to put a little oil on the stem. What kind of oil are you using? Oh, uh, this is some just assembly oil that I got, some W100 okay. arrow oil shell. So you want to just rub it in, get the stem nice and wet. And we're going to just put it into the guide, slide it in. Repeat the process on all of these. Oil the stems. I like to use oil. I don't ever like to use grease or assembly lube on a valve stem because it can keep the oil from getting in and burn the valve stem up, or the valve guide up. Okay. So always a good practice. Use motor oil. It's what it's going to lubricate the stem, and the guide itself actually has lubricant in it. So never grease on the guide. Gotcha. The grease comes in next. I'll show you what we're going to use that for. So we got all our valves installed now. Okay. Now we're going to go to the springs. We have our springs. The retainer's ready here. We have our springs oriented in the right. See all the springs? Yep. Tight coils to the bottom, loose coils to the top. Very important that it will run either way, but the spring's meant to operate like that. Gotcha. So we're going to take a little of this molly grease now, next, and we're going to put a little in these grooves on the valve. These little grooves that the keepers go in, we're going to fill these with black grease. And this grease is going to hold those keepers so you can uh, assemble the head without them falling out on you. Okay, so we got our grooves full. Put that away. Now we're going to take our spring. Put this where you can see a little better. And I usually start on one side and work my way to the end. So you're going to place the spring like this with your hand. You're going to come in the back of the head, put this on the valve. And then you close it down slowly, you know, get everything lined up. And that's what it should look like. And you're going to grab your keepers. These are your locks. And they should stick here if I can get it off my finger in that grease we put on. So that stays. Do they only go one way? or? Yeah, they go tapered side down. Okay. See? It's like a cone shape. Yep. This side's the top. Okay, so we got those both on there. Now we're going to slowly release this tool and everything will lock in place. Nice. And we repeat the process. You want to make sure that you get all three keeper or all three grooves in the, the valve. What it should look like you should have a little valve stem sticking out. It should be symmetrical all the way around. Awesome.
to be stubborn. We'll leave that one for you. <laughs> gears on the uh, crank. So what is that gear called? This is the timing gear. Timing gear? And this is the one that's on the crank that runs the camshaft. So, and you got the main bearing on there? Yeah, you have to put the bearing on. You can, on a performance motor, I usually buy two sets of bearings and use the split one up here. But otherwise, you want to make sure you get this on first or you got to do it twice. So that's that part. The spacer. That's made out of brass or? That's a brass, yes. That's for the distributor drive gear. Gotcha. Let's snap ring Gotta get it just the right temperature. How long do you leave it on there? Until spit evaporates just right. <laughs> it's a good technique. Come in close. Listen. Nope. <laughs> you wanted to do that. That's the test. So that was about a minute. It was hot already though. Yeah. Some pretty cool pliers. You got that crank, it looks awesome. Yeah, man, you gotta have no dirt. It's not like, motors don't like dirt. You wanna make sure this is on really good, you just make sure you look at it. Now we're good. Next will be our small bearing. Pull towards the flywheel. Okay. 
Next will be our slinger. Parrot. Is that a parrot? Look like this. Gotcha. Yeah, make sure you sling the oil the right way. Yeah. If you sling the that stuff the wrong way, it'll come right out behind the pulley really bad. There we go. Now we're going to move on to the connecting rods. Put okay. a little oil on your bearing. Gotcha. Is that enough? Yep. I'm going to show you how to do this one and then you can do the rest of them, okay? Alright, cool. A little oil on that. Okay, so put it right here. Good bearing. Oops, I'm going over out. All right, remember tangs, tangs down, it's number one. Number one's over here. I'm do this, tang to tang. Tang to tang. Not the tang that you drink, but the tang on the bearing. Gotcha. All right, bolt. I'll use this one to uh, get it tight. Well, you know, so you don't drop it, that torque wrench is pretty bulky, so. Okay, I'm gonna torque them, you know, just I tighten it a little bit over here, and I come over here, and I tighten it a little bit, and then I go back over here for okay. my torque, okay? Yep. And I can go back and forth a couple times on these because the torque's pretty high on these. Click, that's torque. Gotcha. And we're going for 35? It's 27 to 38 is the recommended torque value. I pick 35, it's in the middle. It's okay. an older bolt, so. Okay. okay. No. That's what we want here. Cool. We want our rod to uh, spin like that when we're done. Nice. Okay, you try it. All right. Now, this is number one. Number two, or the next one's going to go that way. So we're going to alternate every one. Gotcha. So we're going here. Yep, so your tangs are going to be down. So you're going to oil this baby up. Yep. You're going to get the whole bearing covered. The tangs are going to go down. The rod goes this way. All right, and what, when you're talking about the tangs this year. Locks, tangs, yep. whatever you want to call them. Yep. And it goes tang to tang. Tang to dang. Yep, it's going to go like this. That's exactly right. Just like you're going to put oil on that. Yep. You're going to put oil on that, and you're going to hold it together with one hand, and you're going to take these bolts and put them in. Don't let go of it. All right. Yeah. Don't get in a hurry. Tang down. Tang to tang. Tang to tang. And the tangs are on opposite sides of each other. Yes, they are. Okay. And the numbers. Just go together. Don't complicate yourself. <laughs> All right, hold, it, hold it just like that with your two fingers. Okay. Now for your other hand up, grab a bolt. All right. Start your bolt on that side. Now I try to put the rod straight up and then tighten it, you know, snug it. And then you can free your other hand away after you get that. Okay. Just like that? Yep. I just want to get it tight where the bearing can. Okay. Now you're going to snug it down with a little one. Go ahead and use torque wrench. All right. And you 
can you just have it straight up like this? Yes, you can. All right. I like to hold the rod. Uh -huh. Like this? Just hold, yeah, I just want to keep it moving. All right. Are you right-handed or left-handed? I'm right-handed. Oh, there. A little at a time, remember? You're going to torque pull out a little bit and I go to the other side. Okay. Okay, go to the other side. You should have her click this time. Go to the other side. So you're just easing it down. Mm -hmm. Rod's still moving? Nope. Yeah. Just do that. He's got it pinched on the side. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. It's sticking on the side of the bearing, so. So you just double check it a couple times? Yeah, I do. Good so. Good is there anything you're looking for as far as fit? Uh, you really can't adjust the side clearance too much, but right. you want to make sure it has a little bit. This is how the oil get, exits the rod, you know what we were talking right. about. Yeah. It's a little tight on the Volkswagen for racing application, so you have to notch this crank to make it work for the rod. <clears throat> you know, so race. is that something you measure? Uh, you can, but you just, can't adjust it. So gotcha. you're, unless you're going to weld the crank up or, you know. So, so you just know there's, there should be a little wiggle. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want excessive. Yeah, that's what it needs. It's good to go. Cool. Awesome. Next rod goes that way. See a little notch in the rod? We'll do this one so for better filming purposes. See that notch? Yep. See the washer? Yep. This is a little tricky with these little short rods, but. I'm gonna paint it just like that. Two. Need to get the wrist pins too for this. Arrow, we talked about this little bit of detonation on here. It's not going to be a problem, but it just scarred the piston a little bit. Now we're going to position the rings towards the top of the piston. There's our one oil ring. And our other oil ring's good, it's not at the bottom. We're going to clock this one over here. This is our other top ring over here. So we got ring here, ring here, oil ring, and oil ring. Cool. There so it goes towards the flywheel. Can you talk about the rings for a second and sure. how they work? Well, you got your compression ring. This is the oil control ring, and then this is the wiper ring. These, This ring here is a three-piece ring. It has the two rails and then the wiper. And basically, these are pretty common. You, know, uh, you can see these little grooves they put in the rings. When those are gone, you know to replace them. These are fairly new. So you can see those little lines. Those will be gone and shiny if you need to replace them. Okay. But these have been done. They're all clean, put back on there. We hung the cylinders and uh, we'll put a little oil on these. I'll show you how I put them in the cylinder. And just put a little bit on the skirt, not an excessive amount. I want to put a light amount on the rings. If you get too much oil on these rings, being that they're new, they won't mate to the cylinder and it'll just smoke forever. Gotcha. Right, you got a ring compressor.
That's a vintage compressor. Vintage. <laughs> They make uh, tapered ones now for the bigger cylinders, mm -hmm. which are really nice. So that's that. We got the wrist pins we need to get, and uh, we're on our way. Cool. Molly lube on the lifters. These are original lifters, so we didn't change the cam or anything. It's all OG stuff. OG 40 horse. Hell yeah. So, Basically everything's original from the original engine except for the, the parts that wear out. Like the, the crank shaft had been turned ten thousands, so you know that was uh, one thing we got some different bearings for it. And we got everything cleaned up. And I think we're ready to go. I'm gonna take the crank out and uh, put the bearing on and go for it. All right. That rear bearing over there. Thanks, sir. Mm -hmm. So we already marked our bearings and everything, located our dowel pins. Yep. So dowel pin always goes towards the flywheel. Yeah, so Darren's been working on this engine for a couple days actually, getting it cleaned up. It was in pretty bad shape. Um, we got the valve job to heads and stuff, but we got it. This is going to be a nice little motor. And uh, I'm going to be really happy to see you driving. That's oh, what man. It's all about, man. It's going to be awesome. And next time you can build. You can come over here and use my shop. But That'd be cool. You, know, you can rebuild the next one. That'd be, yeah, I'd appreciate it. That'd be uh, fun. This is the first time I've ever done anything like this, so it's pretty exciting. I'm going to set this down here. I'm going to spin our rear bearing and start back there easily. Bump. I come up here and grab this rod and just hold up a little bit. Spin it around. Let's be real close there. And get this one. One time, nice. right there. Sure, so seated. You need to hand me that bearing, or I'll grab it. This is our bearing half that goes in the other case. We're gonna put this here and make sure it doesn't rock. It should be very firm, just like that. Go ahead and feel that. So you feel what that feel like. Yeah. Get no movement. That tells you the crank is seated flat in the case. Nice. So now we can put this bearing in this case half. We have our dowel pin in. There we go. Put oil on that. CP Performance cam plug here. Yep, they look pretty sweet. Look pretty nice. They say no sealer required. We'll probably put a little bit of aviation permatex under it just so we can sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> just to be safe. Come over here. So, this is what they used in the factory. This is aviation permatex. This is like the staple for Volkswagens. I like to use the silicone on the more, you know, high performance motors, but this is fine for this kind of motor. Yeah, this is just a basic 40 horse. Stocker. So we're going to build it just like this. The case is really nice on this motor, all the mating surfaces, so we should have no problems. Uh, this stuff can get hard over a, a period of time, but it will last quite some time, you know. You'll get good service out of it. Good stuff. 
used to be it, man. It took years to talk uh, my old boss into changing, you know, from this to anything else. So it works pretty well. Yeah, usually if you get used to using something, you get stuck Yeah, on I mean, you know, you have to really, uh, unless it fails on you, there's no sense to change, you know? Right. So. What are the benefits of the silicone? I think it's just got a little longer life. You know, it doesn't get as brittle from the heat where this stuff can get a little brittle. Right. But it's, it's you know. It's fine it's for. Fine. You know, really what I do over here is double up on the back though. And just uh, hold it over here on this side and that other case half. And this stuff doesn't smooth too far like silicone, so you don't have to worry about it getting down in the engine. But, you know, don't put too much. I'm just going to put a little bit down here just because I'm sure CB's cam plug is far superior to anything I've ever used, but I feel better with a little sealer. Yeah, <laughs> sure. A little bit of sealer. Can't hurt. But it fits nice. Goes in the groove really good. I like to put them in that way, flat side out. That way the cam walks a little bit. It doesn't wear through the plug. Gotcha. If it was an automatic car, you turn it around a little bit like this, a uh, you know, flex plate bolt comes through, you can uh, not compromise the cam plug. So, cool. We'll leave her like that. Put a little on the top here. And that's it. We're ready to uh, check everything. The oil, oil, lifters, lifters. X. What are you doing? Put the cam in. Okay, cool. We're gonna button up the bottom end here. You gotta put that in. Yeah, it won't run without this. So, get that dropped in. And I learned from the last motor that you always wanna, uh, you know, mark the timing marks. Yep. Because I'm going blind, so you can see here what I did with the timing marks. Timing marks are painted. Got two dots on the crank gear and one dot on the cam. So, you know, put that on there and it's easy to see. Gotcha. Got all our uh, stuff in here. We put oil on the cam. And then, we're gonna take this and put it over here. I hope the lifters don't fall out. Rods are in, we've already checked our bearings, so we're gonna apply a little pressure here. Get those babies to stand up like magic. Nice. We've got our case app over here. We have all our lifters installed. We have all our cam bearings in place. We have our bearing in there. We have our cam plug installed over here, and we're ready to make the two case apps. Now, we just hope the lifter clips stay clipped. like that. Nice. My rubber hammer. I never got a head bench. Make sure it's all seated. Tap, tap, tap. There we go. Now, put a little firm text down here at the base of these. This keeps the uh, oil from crawling up the stud. This is a non o ring case. So. so, you put that down and then you put the washer on top of it? Yes, sir. You put more on top of the washer? No, too? just the bottom. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just trying to create a little seal there. These are good to seal up too because these will go to the cam journals, these two here. So they are in oil. So washer down. Flat side. Let's see the washer's got a flat side and a bevel side. Most all washers do. Flat, bevel. Mm -hmm. Flat surface should go down. Okay.
Is it a good idea to use new hardware for those? I like to use new hardware. Yeah. And, uh, you know, these are sealing nuts. Some guys put these on upside down and take the washer off. I don't do it that way. But, you know, there's always different ways to do things. We're just trying to share the way that I was taught. It works pretty good for me. And then I'm trying to pass it on to people that might be able to use the information. So That's awesome. That's all we can do. Well, you've been building engines since late 70s? Early one, 79. 79. Yeah, working for Scooter. I worked there for probably three years, washing parts before he let me touch the motor. You know, yep. Other than dirty ones. <laughs> and uh, worked there for quite a while before I was trusted to assemble stuff. I got was able to build cylinder heads first, and then move on to the engines. And he's always built all the performance motors. I just did the stock stuff. Yep. But, you know. I watched everything he did and took it in like a sponge. So, you want to grab the crank pulley for me? Yeah. There. There we go. All right. Is there any specific sequence there? You just jump around. I usually go corner, corner. You know, crisscross. Yep. You don't want to. Hit them all at one time. You know, you spread the torque out a little bit. Get them snug and then... Mm-hmm. What do you torque these down to? 27 foot-pounds. You need me to adjust it? So you're at 27? Mm-hmm. We snug them down with the, uh, you know, the other ratchet. Yeah. We'll go ahead and check them all in a crisscross pattern. Don't ever check your torque too many times. You want to be confident in what you're doing. So. Oh yeah. Spring washer. Some people want to know what a spring washer is. This is a European thing. Hold on. Let me get close up with that. So it's got like a little bit of a, that's almost like it's bent. It's a wavy washer, a spring washer. There's a couple words for it, but yep. one thing to remember, there's no place for a washer that has a split in it on any kind of engine. Really? Okay. Really. So never use a split washer on any kind of automotive engine or machinery that you want to stay tight. All right, all right. Making my fingers nervous, CT. <laughs> it's all good, man. Mm -hmm. That's why I got extra nuts there. That's what, yeah. <laughs> oh, don't put it there. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Rookie mistake. I mean, right we're there. living good, but yeah. You know, <laughs> Oh boy. We don't want to press our luck. Yeah. That wouldn't be good. Yeah, those look nice. Yeah, they're nice old you know, locker nuts. They look cool. Factory hardware is probably fine, but you know, so I try to use new hardware. When I can.
All right, so what are we getting into here, Darren? You're going to be uh, putting the piston cylinders on first. We're going to put some sealer on those, and we'll install that. And then uh, we have our push rod tubes, our deflector plate. Basically, you're going to bolt the side of the motor up, and then we'll work together on putting the sheet metal and the drive gear and the rest of the components on to make it run. Okay, so, cool. But I want you to bolt this side together so you're familiar with it and you have an idea of what's going on here. We have everything laid out. We've got our stud shortened up now. Everything's ready to go. Awesome. So, so cool. we should be able to get this up and running today, hopefully. We should be able to. As long as there's no major... Uh... Of course, I thought we were going to get it running last time, but, you know, it's not always like you plan. But right. We, we want the end result to be good, so... All right, we're going to reach under here with one hand and hold that rod up. Now slide your jug over this, the studs. Slide it on in there. Get it in there. There you go. Now you're trying to line this pin up with the bushing there. And then just push it through once you get everything lined up. Get my glasses on. All right. Let me help you. This is a little tricky. It's a little tricky because these rods are so short on a 40 horse. So when I put these in, I like to grab them, turn them like this to make sure they're in the clip. Or yep. The groove. I'm going to smooth it a little bit. Just make sure it's in the groove there. Yeah, it'll, it'll go back and forth real smooth if it is. And if it isn't, it'll pop out. Yep. So yeah, I got a pretty good shot of that in the last got video. got clips on there. Go ahead and slide that in now. Push it in. Don't touch that. Just push it in. Just push right here. Yes, sir. Okay. And you're lining so it up. both clips are on both sides. Yes. Got our sealer on. Sealer's on and just push, push it on down. Square it up and push it down. There you go. That's good. Hold it for a minute. All right. Good. And we're ready for our next job. Awesome. You want to try to do that one? Yeah. All right. It's a uh, same process. Let me put a little lube on that pin there. So you got a clip on this side already. Yeah, that's the flat side. I do that because it's easier to, uh, when you assemble the jug like this, you have to put this one in. You know, you can get to the one on the outside, but obviously you can't get in here. Right. So, a little dragon blood in there. Okay. And then uh, you slide it in on the studs, and then you're lining your pin up with your bushing up right there. And push it in. Take your time, it's a little, you know, you'll feel the pin get into the rod and it'll slide right in. I think you got it there. I'll just push it in. Mm -hmm. And I'll have to tap it at the end there. I'll come over and tap it for you. Okay, cool. Tap that in. So there's a flat side on this? Yeah, this one's sort of round, but you can see this side's got a flat edge. And, and the flat you, side goes you out? You want that out so it's locked into the piston and the pin's pushing on this part. Okay. Grab it and you know, move it in the groove. Get it in there, move it around? Yep. So okay. We're going to push that baby home. You hold the motor down because this stand's not as nice as, as your stand. There you go. Line it up in the hole. All right. Nice. Now the reflect plate is next. This is right there. And we'll shape this a little bit. It locks in. This goes under here. Just the flex the air. The air comes down from the fan and hits this and it cools the bottom of the jugs. Yep. And if you leave this off, 
the jugs don't cool. The air blows right through them and they'll overheat. Gotcha. So this is very critical. I don't want to leave these off. And there's two sides. There's one, it looks like there's a bigger side and a... Small side goes in. Okay. Big side goes out, just like that. Nice. So go ahead and place the head on those studs. Let's go ahead and get it started on there. Well, let's put a little sealer on those O-rings real quick. I like to put a little bit of sealer on here. Just a little bit. It's been on there nice now, huh? Never know they were hard to get on there. <laughs> yeah, those were tough. Yeah. Are those just on the 40 horse? Yeah, this is a 40 horse thing. All right, now you're ready to go ahead and put the head up there. All right, get the head on. Yep. Awesome. That's how it goes, pop it on there. Beautiful thing. All right. Go ahead push it up a little further. Okay. All right. Now we need the push rod tubes behind you. So that's it right there. All right. Seams always go up on these. You have where it's laser welded there. Yep. You want those at the top. Okay. Okay. By the way, these are super sweet. Uh, 40 horse push rod tubes. They're shorter than a 1600. And uh, he got these at Wolfsburg West and they're super nice. Yeah, they are nice. So uh, it's really cool to get the actual proper tube. So the way we put these in, so I like to pull the head out a little bit like this, okay? So I use the, the cylinder head and the block sort of to hold it in place. I'll take two hands, put these in my pocket. Seam up, of course. Get it in there, get out, just hold it just like that. The next All right, one. so the seam, this part here, yep. goes up. Yep. Okay. Just in case it leaks for some reason. Yeah, you know, sometimes they can leak from there. Uh, and it's just a good practice to put the seam at the top. see all the seams just line those up you know turn them get all the seams at the top they all at the top you can look right here and see them yep so that's what i usually look through there and i'll just put the head on like that and then i'll line them all up make sure they're all straight yeah i can see the seam okay cool all right so now you know we want to look at everything we got our deflector plate on there we got all our push rod tubes in place and we're ready to go for the uh, cylinder head hardware next All right, I got these four up top. Okay, put, put the other ones on. And then I got these here. One more to go. One more here. All right. Okay. Hand me two of the nuts over there. Now I usually start like when you have the studs have been shortened. You know, it's a good practice to go ahead and grab these first. Okay. So the wash just don't fall off and go down the push rod tubes. Gotcha. And two more nuts. And we can start putting them on the top up there. Okay. And we need to push this head in a little bit more too, right? Oh, we'll go down. Put the bolts on. Okay, got those all on. All on. All right, we're gonna tighten it down. I like to watch the tubes, make sure they don't get pinched. Everything looks good under there. 
start in the middle. Uh, here's the outside. <laughs> Somebody will send you a snowblower. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold for Florida. Yeah. We need a couple really cold days to get rid of some of these mosquitoes. Oh, no, man. They're terrible. It's a national bird down here. So you're just getting it snugged up, and then we'll go. And you're going to go over it with a pork on it. Pork it. Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to go ahead and torque the heads one more time. So I'm just okay. taking this off so you can, you know, torque it, both heads. But I just put this in to make sure we cleared the studs and we were going to be able to adjust the valves and gotcha. weren't going to have any more surprises. So everything looks good. So you just put this rocker arm on just to check? Yeah. Just so you got to pull it back off to just torque get everything, a, right? get a reference. We're going to retorque everything together and then we'll adjust the valves together. Okay. So... We go ahead and get your torque wrench and we'll start on the uh, side that you just put the head on over there. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and torque the heads now. Okay. So we're going to start here. All right. Either one of these? Yep. Just start snugging them down. Don't torque them. Just you're like the rod bolts. You know, you're gotcha. going to ease the head down. Just like that? Yep. Here? We'll tighten it a little more than that. Okay. There you go. Go to the next one. Over here. All right. All right. Go down here now. Okay. All right. Come over here. Now go over here. All right, and go over there. Over here. Back over in that corner. And then the centers. Keep going. Here? Oh, in the centers. Oh, in the centers? Yep. There you go. Go ahead. Keep going? Yep. All okay. right, up here. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, here. Back in that corner over there. Over here. Over there. And the centers one more time. Here. Yep. All right, now we're gonna go to this side. All right, we're gonna bump it up a couple pounds here. So that was at 25? 25, now we're gonna go to 27. See, it's on the line down there. Yep. Zero. Now we're going to go. So that's 25. One. 1.5. Yeah. 1. Two. That's 27. Yep. Gotcha. All right. Go back to the other side over there and start in the center and do your crisscross pattern. Your two O rings on those two studs over there, the rocker studs, the new O rings. This side already has the new O rings. So the original ones that were like a brass, or no? Those no, are... they're white. Okay. They're just dirty. Gotcha. So this is the old one, it's the new one. All right, then this goes over to studs here on the head. Yep, just sits down in that little groove there. And that's what the uh, rockers sit on? Yes, sir. Keeps the uh, oil coming out the back of the stud. Okay. All right. Now, uh, let me grab those push rods next and put a little oil in them. Let me tighten this down. I'll be right around there. All right. Get our uh, push rods here. Get this 
this o-ring out of here mm -hmm. he said I don't think so <laughs> there it goes <laughs> so we got our push rods in there we got our head all torqued on got our valve springs all on the correct way yep. got a valve job Somebody had asked about the crank. We did not turn the crank. We just measured it, and uh, it was turned 10 thousandths, but had standard bearings on it. So we corrected that, uh, polished the crank up, and uh, polished the rods, and put all new bearings in her, honed the cylinders, and that's what got us to this point right now. So, Yeah, the, uh, the rods and the crank look amazing so we, you know a lot of it's cleaning which anybody can do you just take your time clean the parts up and you'll have a really good motor the cleaner the motor the better it'll last so we'll give it a little slant there I put a little assembly lube on the uh, tips there we'll slide that in About a lot of dragon blood. Oh boy. Gonna have to get more for your 1600. <laughs> hey, I'm ready. Gotta make that gear run. I'm yeah, that, get a daily driver. That would be fun. Yep. Build your little 1600 like the bus has. It'd be bacon with bacon powder. <laughs> <laughs> Adjusters, just a smidge for startup. And I like to put a little squirt down in these blocks. What brand is that? That's uh, Permatex, right? Permatex, ultra slick. Ultra slick. Dragon's blood. Dragon blood. That's what I call it, dragon blood. Now I just get all these started by hand, like so. And then you can push the rocker on like that. You want to make sure all these are in the cups. Or you'll bend a push rod very easily. Gotcha. And then we'll have to uh, check and make sure that our push rods are clear of the tubes. They look to be very close there. So we might have to bend the tubes a little bit. We'll address that when we get to it. Yeah, that, that one seems like it's right on the tube, huh? Yeah. What causes that? It's just... Just the machine work on the uh, parts. Gotcha. You know? Moves probably these tubes are quite a bit, you know. I guess everything's just smaller on a 40 horse. Yeah. So we'll make room for them. I know these are torqued to 18 foot pounds. I usually just tighten them by hand because you know, I'm pretty good at 18 foot pounds, but we can go ahead and torque them if you like. Yeah. You just know, you've, you've done it so many times, you can feel it. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to tighten these too tight because what happens is you'll smash these blocks and it'll keep the rocker shaft, you know, bind everything up, so. Definitely not somewhere that it has to be extra tight. On the performance stuff, sometimes we'll use a uh, eight millimeter head nut there. It's a 15 millimeter nut instead of a 13. So yeah, can we talk about that a little bit? You've, you've worked on a lot of performance engines over the years. Mm -hmm. What are some of the most popular performance engines? When I was younger, the most popular motor would be like, you know, 82 by 94 was about as big as you can go. But now they've made cranks available to everybody. Right. And, uh, you can build a pretty decent sized motor with an aluminum case. They come pre-clearance, so it's pretty easy to assemble everything. Like what is this one right here? That's a 2210. It's an 82 by 90 and a half. Wow. And uh, we built that on video. There was quite a bit of hand clearancing the camshaft and stuff on that. Uh, if I had to do it again, I'd order the camshaft turned down. CB can actually turn the cam down, mm -hmm. make the diameter smaller, so the rod clears through it. Yep. Uh, if you don't want to deal with the rod clearancing issue, you know, you stick to like a 74 or 78 millimeter crank. Yep. And you can pretty much bolt that together and uh, build a nice little stroker. We just built this uh, 78 by 94 motor over here. Did that on video. And that one went together pretty good. 
that was an early aluminum case. It wasn't clearance for uh, a stroker crank, so there was a little bit of clearancing involved. But if you order a case, you can uh, pretty much build a decent motor now, uh, right off the shelf parts. CB Performance is a good source, A uh, and A. You uh, can pick your supplier. You just have to keep in mind, you know, if you're going to make a lot of power, you're probably going to need a little better parts. If you just want a mild street car, those parts are far, you know, they'll do the job. Yeah, I mean, th these are like race engines, right? Yeah, I mean, if you're going to drag race it, you're going to have to step up to different parts, you know. Yeah. Uh, stuff that's not so much available. Those aren't really daily driver engines right there. No, like this, the turbo motor right there is a good example. You know, they're, they're similar in size, but the parts are a lot different, the quality of the parts. Right. So this this has a, a empty crank in it where the race motor has a scat billet crank. And, uh, you know, if you're building a street motor and you only want to make 160, 150 horsepower, which is a lot of power, you know, you can get away with the parts that are available now. If you're going to drag race it, you're probably going to want to call SCAT and maybe get some good rods and uh, design your motor for the higher RPM. So some of the race stuff we turn like 10,000 RPM, so the parts have to be really good. But on the street stuff, we try to keep it about 6,500. Gotcha. Plus, they hold up pretty well. That's cool. So. And this is your bug. You've raced it many, many times over the years. Yeah, I had that. Got it when I worked at Scooters. Uh, probably the beginning pictures would be the white ones over there. It was white first. It was primer first. Yeah. And then I painted it white. And then it got painted this burgundy color over here. Yeah. Recently it was painted with the flames. And now it's waiting for another paint job, a new identity. <laughs> <laughs> You've had it a long time. Yeah, I've had it. It was my first car. So wow, that's pretty cool. I drove man. it to college, Carson Newman, Tennessee, drove it back. That's really cool. Yeah. Very cool. A lot of history there. Got it from Rick, Rick Morrow down at Scooter Shop. He was building a race car, and he bought it for a parts car. And uh, I got the leftovers. So. <laughs> that's impressive. <laughs> yeah, just go ahead and torque it up. And I've torqued it two rocker nuts. The rocker nuts, okay. And, and we're set to 18? Yes, sir. Okay. You're pretty much right on already. Yeah. Uh, a little loose. Okay, just go back and forth a couple yeah, times. Check it twice, you know. 18 foot pounds, that's pretty much the standard for these. That's the factory uh, setting. Uh, you can refer to this book. This is the book I like to use. Everybody asks me what books I use. And I like the uh, without guesswork manuals from Volkswagen. It's probably similar to the service manual you have. You can go online and look at these, and you type in your year car, and these have all the specs for your car from, uh, you know, the crankshaft measurements, ring and pinion, backlash, uh, any kind of measurement that's in the car is in this book. Oh, that's cool. Uh, torque specs, anything. And this is all factory setups. So, you know, it's a, it's a good resource. It's awesome. So uh, there's not a lot of pictures, as you can see, but there's a lot of information. So. A lot of technical data. Yeah. Well, yeah. Anything you want to know? Uh, Samba's a great source. They they have all these published on there. Yep. So that's a good place to look for that kind of information. All right, you're right on there. Boom. All right. So now we're at the point where we're going to start putting all your accessories and stuff on. Okay. So we'll start with the uh, J tubes, I guess, first. We need to, uh, start with the J tubes. Yeah, you have a exhaust uh, kit kit over there. A yeah. hole might need to be drilled. Like that. Is it, did it go on? Yeah. Yep. Might have all the nuts you need in it. Yeah, I got this from Wolfsburg too. Got baby out got right the whole here. kit. No washer. No washer. You got the gasket there. There's a gasket on there. Goes dry or metal. Do these nuts go on either way? Either way. This is a standard nut. There's your 13 inch right here. Snug them, but uh, don't tighten them. Just get them drawn down because we're going to want to put our muffler on and line that up. So. Start assembling these. 
Yeah. All right, so we went, we're going with the uh, J tubes. We're getting rid of the heater boxes because we don't really need heat down here in Florida. Uh, a couple days a year, maybe. You know, so we've deleted the heater boxes, we've got the J tubes. Getting these on here. This one's a little tight. The thread's a little rusty. You get rusty? Yeah. I might be able to just get it started. It'll be fine. Yeah, I got it. Now. I put a new stud in one of these. Yeah, I know there was a stud missing. We fixed it. Was this a 13? Yes, sir. 10. There we go. Yeah, I've got the original heater boxes. I was going to cl clean them up and restore them. And yeah, that would be a good project. Maybe yeah. I'll put them on later if you want. Yeah, I might do that. Remember, don't tighten those. Okay. Just loosen that up. All right, keep those loose. Yeah, you want to loosen it until we get the muffler installed. So it'll okay. make everything easier to fit. Gotcha. And then a little wiggle room. Okay. A little wiggle room. Magic touch. Yeah. Oh, him and my gasket down there. Where does it go? Right on the J tube. Right here? Mm hmm Okay. Two's a little fire come out of there. No. <laughs> yeah, Quickest way to burn them up. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's not nice. It's tight. It's a tight fit. Good and tight. Good and tight. They call it good and tight. <laughs> well, this is a. Uh, the original motor, the original muffler is a stale air. Yeah. Or fresh air. It's basically the same. The only difference is it has this little adapter plate. Yeah, man. I found this on the Samba. The guy was out of Texas. I think I paid 70 bucks for it. He probably sold it to you because it didn't fit. You didn't know you could adjust it with a hammer. Ah. Yeah, it was cheap because most people want 200 bucks for them. I got it for... He's going to be mad when he sees his video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> None of them used to fit back in the day. I, when I first started in the Volkswagen, we used to get them from Walker, and they were really nice. But, you know, like anything... It was Walker out of... As the years go on, the quality declines, it seems like, you know? Yep. You get the old new stock stuff that didn't fit that people are okay with now. Yeah, this is an old German company. Yeah, I mean, hey, it's on there. That's good. It's to adjust it a little bit. Yeah. A little narrow. One more nut. This is, uh... sure one of the German guys will chime in. Yeah, what is it? It's got a label on it, so? It's the E-L-E, -E or... Not sure what that company. There's guys out there that know all those brands. Yeah, made in Western Germany. Uh, 
Wow, that's exciting to see that muffler go back on there. It really starts to come together when you put the heads on. Yep, we're going downhill now and you know, we had some issues, but we overcame them. And uh, we'll get this one done and move on to the next one, man. I'm looking forward to doing more projects. I got plenty of projects. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna be doing some welding next, I guess. Well, that'd be nice. So the J-tubes are on, the exhaust is on. Man. Portra goes on the nut side. Alright, so we got this little Yep, basically let me show you how it goes. And then pull this like this. And then you want to place your clamp like so. You okay. Want to capture that metal piece and just lip on the muffler. Yep. I'm gonna bring that over like that. And you want to make sure, in case scooter's watching. That these are straight and the bolts are symmetrical, not tightened on one side. And gotcha. Equal length. Let's tighten them up. I'll give you my tools when I'm done. You should be ready to tighten yours up. Yeah, buddy. Alright, we're gonna put the oil sending unit in. Don't ever use Teflon tape. Okay. On a Volkswagen case. Alright. Okay. So you can use the uh, liquid Teflon. That's good. Alright, don't use Teflon tape. No, I try not to. I mean it's personal preference. But some people do. Yeah, and some people break the case right here. And uh, not so critical on a magnesium case like this. Yeah. But if you're used to using Teflon tape on a magnesium case and you do it on an aluminum case, it's gonna break, I guarantee it. Okay. And I've had it happen to good friends, and it's just better practice to get the, the liquid Teflon. So this is liquid Teflon? Yeah. Okay. It doesn't exaggerate the torque, so you know you're not over-tightening the, the cinder. Gotcha. You just get it snug? Yeah, tighten it a little bit. It's adjustable. Adjustable. So there's no torque spec, you just get it no, snug? just get it tight. You know, you don't want to get it over-tight. Right. right there. Good. You know, it didn't stop. I stopped. Yeah. You could, you could go tighter and break it, but, you know, right. it's tight enough. Let's get it tight. nice and snug. Yep. That's all you need. So next is our cylinder tin. Well, I just like to actually bolt the uh, oil cooler over here. Is the oil cooler clean, or do we need to wash that, or is it ready to go? I did spray it out with some brake clean a couple times, but okay. we might want to hit it one more time. Uh, your standards are probably a lot higher than mine. I always blow it out real good, because the... My safety clean's so dirty. I don't have any brake clean. Or, uh, oh, car brake. Yeah, I sprayed the hell out of it pretty yeah. good. We'll give it a good shot of air. There was a lot of junk that came we out of it. just want to make sure it's not dirty. Uh, I normally... It's pretty clean. Yeah, I cleaned it pretty good. So the kit comes with a few different types. These are the ones that we need. Yep. Those are generally the ones for this case. So Darren was saying he usually re just replaces the oil cooler with a new one, but... Yeah, they're currently available now, and they come way down in price. Yep. And it's just good peace of mind. This one's super clean. 
But if you have any kind of engine failure, it's not worth trying to clean it up and use on a new motor. You know, it's better just to go ahead and start with a new one. Right. This motor never ran, so I mean, it's fairly, there's no debris in it as far as engine debris. Commented about the locking nuts melting, which won't happen. They don't get hot enough. I, I wouldn't use it on the exhaust, but the case never gets that hot. Right. So you should be fine with a lock nut. We've used them for years. I've never seen one melt, but if they do, it'd be an indication that the motor's not tuned properly. So. Yeah, I was pretty impressed with your temperature gauge in your bus. It was running at, what was it running at? Uh, max cylinder head temperature usually is around 200 degrees. Wow. But it's got, a little, you know, some tricks with the camshaft in there. And uh, I didn't come up with it on my own. I had some help. Yeah. And a uh, guy in California reached out to me. It's no longer around anymore, but hooked me up with the right combination of parts. And really worked good and he taught me a little bit about how to reduce the cylinder head temperature that's awesome man so, very cool that's the problem if you're you know have all swaggers it's one of the things you battle right cylinder head temp so we're going with the flat washer and a spring on here spring washer first flat first spring washer then the nut this is the flat one yep the new one's the spring washer the shiny one goes <laughs> under the nut okay Ooh, that is tight, boy. <laughs> it wasn't just me. <laughs> I have to do it backhanded. Stand next to the motor and do it like with my back to the engine. Yeah, that's a. Let's <laughs> see, you got to put all three on at the same time is the trick, right? Mm-hmm. Sounds like you got it. Oh boy, don't jinx me. Uh, that uh, there we go. Part three coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> no, no part three. It took me a lot longer than it did. Yeah. Oh, that that uh, bolt's a little crusty. Yeah, we get another nut. No, I just need a wrench. Okay, here. What size is it? Ten. Ten. get this thing done yeah. we gotta do some body work just get it nice and snug one here yep. okay things look nice. You are good, man. You got one chance to make it right, Matt. <laughs> Don't drop it in the fork. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, that would not be good. <laughs> I'm going to pull the head off this point. Mm. You need a port plug. Yeah, we're going to put the intake on in a minute. This is pretty exciting. Yeah, 
you know, it's one of those things you'd love to be able to do it, you know, do it by yourself, but it's honestly, it's fun building with somebody else, especially if somebody that knows what they're doing. Yeah. 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 You know, if somebody's willing to teach, I'm willing to listen, man. I seem very passionate about it. So yeah, you know, absolutely. It's a waste of time, so it's, it's a good time for everybody. This is cool. All right, man, we're going to uh, go ahead and do the scripture ride here next. So okay. Uh, hold the camera. I'm yes, sir. Do... All right, what are we doing now? Okay, we're going to touch on the distributor drive here a little bit. I, I read through the comments on the uh, video, and I saw a couple people ask why that didn't get put in. Some people put the distributor drive in. And some people build it. They learn how to assemble it as they're assembling the case. They'll assemble this side. They'll lay the drive gear in there, the crankshaft. They know how to distribute or bolt it in the motor. Yep. Uh, I know JC does it like that, but I've never learned like that. So uh, I'm not saying that's the wrong way or the right way. I right. just learned how to do it this way. There's more ways, more, more right. than one way to do it. So this is the way that I was taught. Yep. And uh, it's just the way that I'm comfortable with. Okay. Not that I wouldn't. Do it the other way. We'll be open to try it, but I tend to put the distributor in a little later in the build. But that's like just said, how you know I how don't to think do it. There's a really wrong way or a right way. That's well, if you know what you're doing, you're comfortable with it. Yeah, why, I've you never know. dropped the washer yet, but that, that's the, that's the fear. You know, you're dropping the washer. Gotcha. So we're gonna get this on TDC, which is back here. And what is, how do we know we're on number one? Yeah, number one cylinder here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at the rockers. Both yep. of them are static, okay? So okay. That's on the back side of the cam. These are ready to adjust, so that's number one. All right. All right, so now we're gonna take your distributor. Very nicely restored distributor here. Yep. Old school. And we're gonna take the cap off. Yeah, the guys over at Vintage Works uh, restored that for me, the carburetor and move over to the bench. There we go. All right. So now we're going to orientate the distributor the way we want it to be in the motor. So this is in a vacuum. This is a vacuum advance motor. The vacuum advance should be somewhere over here. Okay. You know? So. We're going to establish where the distributor goes. This is the orientation we want the vacuum canister to be in. So now we're going to mark number one. Uh, the O9s have a little mark on them, you know, they'll have a little notch in the distributor. This doesn't seem to have that. Yeah, it does. It's Just, hard to see. Okay. I, remember, I remember seeing see it. see if we can find that little uh, notch. Yep. That's the notch. Where do you see the number one at? And then there's a one right there. Oh, sweet. Okay. He's see it? Yeah, he's marked it then. Okay, yeah. So that's where we want our number one to be. So now we're going to get our drive gear next. Is the bench over here? Yep. I'm going to take the spring out. That goes in last. But now we're going to pull the distributor out. So you just kind of put it where you want it and you figured out where you needed it to be. Now we're going to take the drive gear and we're going to put it on here. Did we put the little spring in there? Nope, not yet. Okay. Not yet, my friend. So this is the orientation I need to install my drive gear in, okay? Okay. So now I take this out, set this here. Okay. Okay, you see how it's got a big side and a short side? This is more of a circle than this side. Yeah, it's like two half moons, one's right. smaller than the right. other. Okay, yep. so our bigger half moon is gonna go to the top. I have to grab some pliers, so just remember that. And our orientation is almost to the fuel pump stud. Right. Okay, we line this line up. All right, next we got our washers. These are the two shims that go on the bottom of the drive gear. Okay. So these will go right here. And what these do is they keep the drive gear from having too much bump going up and down. And those were in there originally. Right. So you just got to make sure you keep... usually two of them or one big one. Okay. So our drive gear, got our uh, 
chins there. Now we need the magic screwdriver. This is the magic screwdriver. You gotta have a screwdriver long enough to get down in here. Okay. To contain your washers. Gotcha. Okay. And if you look down in this hole, let me get my flashlight so you can see what's going on down here. If you look down in that hole, you'll see there's like a little ledge where yep. the shims sit. Yep. You see where it's machined down there? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put my screwdriver in between that with the shims on the screwdriver. So okay. I have an idea what's going on. First, we're going to take some oil and we're going to put some oil down in this hole. And the other thing we're going to do first is we're going to orientate this where the hole is flat, like so. Gotcha. Okay. Now we're going to put a little oil in. And I know you guys are thinking, man, it's much easier to put it in as you're building the motor. Right. It's, it's just, just the way you know how to do it. Right. It's just a little more comfortable for me to do it this way. Yeah. But I suggest whatever is the most comfortable for you is how you should put it in. And if you're beginning and you uh, have never done this before, it would probably be a smarter idea to do it the other way and assemble it in the case first. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to. This is the scary part. <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> they're good at screws right. or the washers. So now they're down in there. My flashlight. And then I put my shim in here and I line them up. And there you go. The shims are in. Okay. Yep. All right. Now the drive gear goes in. There they are. Drive gear pliers. Nice. So I already got the gear in my hand there. So this is the distributor drive gear. Right. You got these awesome pliers. Now, this is going to want to turn a little bit as you put it in. So you want to come a little past where you want it. Okay. Gotcha. So as it goes down, it turns with the threads. Right, as it engages in the gear. Yep. So now, springs next. Drive gear's installed. That wasn't too much drama. No. So that's pretty much how that's I do it. it. And now we're going to put the distributor in next. I'm going to lube this O-ring up because it's nice and tight. Lube it up a little bit. Yeah, it's brand new, so it's really tight. And yeah. She's tight in there. Oh, yeah. Real tight. Awesome. There we go. Number one distributor is where it's supposed to be. Number one's right there. Here's our number one hole. We're right on number one. And then we have plenty of sweep both ways for retard and advance. Okay. So there cool. we go. That's that. We'll put a nut and a washer on that and bolt that down. All right. Some of these bad boys. Seam down. That's a beautiful thing, man. It's beautiful. That is looking good. Now we just need some. Uh, Spring marshers here. Let's use these. A little spring marsher, a little nut. A 10 millimeter? Yes. Hand me that 10 millimeter there behind your slate. Right there. Wrench. This right one? Yeah. This one? Yep. Yep. I'm just going to tighten these. 
I'm going to tighten this side, and you're going to tighten that side. Damn, dude, this is looking awesome. Yeah, man. It's like a real Volkswagen motor. Pretty cool. And a pile of parts. To... I love it, man. I, just, I never get enough of it. Custom. Custom, baby. Slum assembly required. Darren's Customs. What are you capping them to? Oh, I used to go about 30. 30? Yeah. Right in there. Nice. I'm going to tighten these, you can feel the uh, crush washer smash, that's good enough. Yeah. I don't want to over tighten them. Just get them snug. I always use a short ratchet, it's a good practice. So you don't over tighten them? Right. See there, buddy. Mm -hmm. Nice fuel pump broad, a little bit of grease. Feel pump at. An original is probably more desirable in the bus community than you know a set of dual carburetors. Yeah. Because uh, I think there's a higher standard with splitties, you know, to do them correct. <laughs> it would be cool to do a dual carb 40. Yeah, you know, I just don't know how much performance. Yeah. You know, I would rather do a 1600. Yeah. And then you can, you know, you actually get a little performance out of it and enjoy it. Or you'd be really be beating on the 40 horse. 
<clears throat> What's amazing is that you know, they can, these guys that they can take these old parts and make them look like that. Yeah, new. that's, that's a talent cool. for sure. To, you know, I know a lot of guys rebuild these pumps, but the guy made it look like new. You know, it's like it came from the factory. How do you know where to plug those in? I know uh, you just have it memorized, but one four three two. It's just a wiring order. No. One four three two. Yeah. Which one is one? We got one. This is number one here. One four three two. Gotcha. And the tens are numbered. Yep. And we'll put these in the. Holders once we put the fan housing on there, but we need to get bolts for that. So let's adjust the valves next, shall we? Yep. Okay, let me get a wrench to turn the motor over. Uh, All right. So rock the motor back and forth. Neither how rockers. Do you tell this you one? see how this rocker's moving? Yeah. See how these aren't? Yeah. That's so this is you, number one. No, this is number one. See number one right here. This is number one. Yep. We're so on, you don't want it to move. No. I want it to be on the back side of the cam so we can adjust the valves. Okay. You're setting them at four? Yep. And uh, you just stay on top of the valve adjustment and you'll be fine. Okay. I set mine at zero. I would never do that on a customer car, but because I can't stand valve train noise. So zero cuts the noise out? It makes it a lot quieter, yeah. But, you know, if you don't stay on top of it and one gets tight, you can burn a valve, so. Gotcha. I try to leave them a little bit of margin on the streetcars. Come on. All right, this is how I like them to feel. So you pull it through so you get an idea of what it should feel like. A little bit of resistance that it goes in. Yep. Okay, so you feel it on both sides of the gauge, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. It's hitting the bow stem and it's hitting the rocker. Gotcha, so it's tight, but yeah. it goes through. Right, and it pulls. Yep. And I want it to be real loose. And okay. that's four? That's four. Okay. All right. So that's sort of how it should feel. Same feel and you feel it on both sides, you know what I mean? Pits in there, but it's yep. some resistance. Gotcha. All right, now we're gonna turn the motor counterclockwise a half a turn. Half a turn counterclockwise from here on out, it'll land on, it'll go all the way around the motor. Okay. We might have to turn it the opposite way just because this might not be tight enough yet. We're, we're gonna try to turn it counterclockwise. So 
So this is something you obviously do with the spark plugs in. You can do it with it in or out. I mean, if you, normally if you're going to service your motor, it's going to uh, have the plugs in it. Yeah. You know? So it doesn't really affect the... Uh... No, it doesn't affect the valve adjustment at all. Okay. Now it will affect how the motor turns over. Now you see how this one's stationary? Yep. Okay, that's what we're looking for. Okay. Here you go. Oh, I was like, where'd it go? I know I had it. Stuff's been disappearing all day though, so. I don't question anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you have multiple tools. Oh yeah. that center nut and tighten the outside nut. Gotcha. Uh. Hmm. Somebody was really strong there. Half turn, counterclockwise. So this should take us to three? Yes, sir. Should be rocking. Is that the exhaust or the intake that's uh, moving? No. We're looking at number three, though. Don't get distracted. Okay. We're good to go. But number three, you don't want anything moving, right? Right. Never anything moving when you adjust the valves. Okay. You're adjusting them on the back of the lobe of the cam. Got a camshaft I could show you. Right here. So here's the camshaft. <clears throat> And as these lobes go around, this is what hits the lifter and opens the valve. So when you adjust the valve, you're adjusting it back here on this side of the cam, the flat part, not the lobe. So that's why when we rock it back and forth, we don't want to see the rockers move. Gotcha. So do your valve adjustment on the back and then it does all its work over the top of these lobes. So. much easier on the engine stand than it is in the car, of course, because you're laying under the car. Feel that? That's too loose. Yeah, I can feel it sliding too easy. Mm -hmm. What is that set to? Uh, I would say that's probably five. Okay. You know, you're using a four feeler gauge. Yep. You should feel resistance. Yep. And if you don't feel resistance, you're probably setting them at five. Okay. You know. 
Did those gauges wear out after a while? Oh, yeah. Now, you see what I'm doing right here? I'm setting these valves. You know how many years Skeeter came behind me and checked this? Every time I tune a car up. How many? For five years. Really? He'd pull every spark plug out, check the gap, and he'd check every valve. Wow. Just a finally quality one, control. Finally one day I'm like, dude, are you ever going to stop and just let me do it? And after that he let me do it. But oh, that's cool, man. He checked, you know, he's like, I just want to make sure that it feels exactly like I want it to feel. Right. Just like I'm teaching you, you know, that's what you want to feel that. That's yep. what you want to feel now. See the difference? Oh, well, yeah. It's you know? definitely tighter. So It's tight. It's tight, but it fits. Yeah. You have and, to you know, you have to remember this is an air-cooled engine, and the lash is only going to get greater as the motor gets hot. So, you know, Volkswagen went from four to six because people weren't bringing their cars in, having the valves adjusted, and the valves would get tight and burn. Gotcha. So that's why it's important every 3,000 miles to adjust your valves and change the oil. This is sort of a rare engine, being that it's a solid lifter motor. Most uh, cars have hydraulic cams. Yeah, I mean, people would run these engines into the ground, you know? Yeah, I mean, it was just, you know, they're not used to servicing cars. Uh, Chevrolets don't require valve adjustments usually, and these cars came over here, and, you know, they had more of a maintenance schedule than a lot of people like, so they would just run them until they broke, and uh, Volkswagen warranty, a lot of them, you know. I know my bus when I bought it had a warranty motor in it, and this is actually a warranty block. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's actually a new block. So yeah, so at some point, Rusty's prob engine... Probably dropped a valve. Yeah. Yeah, that was the most common problem. And they'd go in and they'd put a long block in them. Yeah. So, all right, we're going to turn it a half turn. And I'll be done with the valve adjustment. Cool. We'll put the valve covers on next. We'll be one step closer. Pretty exciting. We're pretty close. If we would have had the generator bolts, we'd be running this bad boy. But we're going to have to go get some bolts. Yeah, we were uh, missing a few bolts and nuts. And but we're going to get it done for you guys. Definitely making good progress today. I always like to start on one. It's a good practice. You know, start on one, finish on uh, number four. Gotcha. Sounds legit. That way you don't forget. Last week we were sweating in here. Yeah. And this week it's nice and cool. Nice and cool. This week we didn't have to have the heater in here. Yeah. I think jokes out. <clears throat> mm. So we're gonna go like this. We'll put our gasket in there and glue it down. And then you can use these gaskets over a couple valve adjustments. Okay. You won't have to replace them every time. Cool. That was a good idea. And uh they work really well. I uh, haven't tried these silicone gaskets yet, you know. Uh, if you want to try those on one of your projects. Yeah, I got these from Wolfsburg. They think they uh, they make these, so I wouldn't mind. Oh, really? We'll would... try them on the 1600. Yeah, absolutely. I just, uh, you know, it's like we were talking about. It's hard to change over when no, you're using something. It's all good. So uh, we're pretty much ready there. I'm going to squirt a little oil in there. 
So I like to just put a little bit on the springs, being it's a fresh motor, a little adjusters. Let's get it in there. Just get a little put the rockers up a little bit for startup. Yeah. Okay, see how this isn't touching over here? Mm-hmm. We're gonna have to adjust that bail. So it won't have oh, any. Oh yeah, it's loose. No pressure. You just need to tap on a little bit. Oh, it needs to be bent. Is this off a of 40 horse? Oh. Are they basically the same? Yeah, there's only two different bands. This is the old. Yeah, well, I guess I can make some uh, artwork out of it or something. that baby on the wall. Okay. It's looking good. It's starting to be a motor, huh? Yeah. It's going to be a motor here in a minute. work. See that bad boy's a little long, but oh, just throw it in. Sorry, brother. Washers. Washers right here. Press washers right on. Right on. Right on, right on, right on. Alright, I'm gonna go down with the bolt so it doesn't look bad. Make sure that goes. Getting there. It's getting there. A few more little problems, but we overcame them. Yeah, we had an issue with the uh, fan. Fan was bent. This fan was bent. Uh, luckily, Darren had another one. We got one donated to the cause. Belting it up. Shimmies. Shim, shim, shimmies. How many shims do you put on there? Oh, it's in the trial and error fit and type of thing. Normally, if you have a shim pack, when you put a new belt on, all of them go in the center. Okay. And as the belt wears, you take them out and it makes the pulley tighter. So we'll try them with all in there and see what, see what we come up with. I think he had a new nut somewhere. Yeah. You want to put that on, the new one? Sure. 
I'm dreaming. This is a dream. Yeah, it's a little loose, so we're gonna have to take some out. So. Okay. No biggie. So that's how this works. You know, you're gonna take some of these out. So how many do you start with? Is it 10? I don't know what the number is, you know? I never really took them all out and started from scratch. Usually, you know. One, two, you got two on there now? I think there's three in there, isn't there? Those are two. Two. Let's try three of them in there. Let's see what that does. It's a fine tuning thing. Mm. Labor of love. been good for me you got your mother down and you lit a fire under my ass it's so. awesome man got my tools all organized got my <laughs> shop lit up yeah i feel like i need to do some stuff now you do man <laughs> you need to do something there you go you want to be able to you know just turn it like that a little bit not too tight where the bearing's going to wear out but you know it just keeps going out of focus okay it's got a little twist now. yeah it's tight but it's got a little yeah you can have turn a little, little bit good yeah so, see me that screwdriver please you just catch it on that screw right there, and it stops it so you can tighten this. Nice. Just get it nice and snug. There you go. We're all ready for this piece of resistance. Oh, yeah. We're going to use this gas that was pretty this. good from CB. Use that. All right, well, we had another issue. Uh, carburetor I got back, the throttle linkage is hitting this part of the governor here. So we're gonna have to address that at some other time. Darren's got another carburetor here. Our brand new one. We're gonna try out, let's see how this works. What, what kind of carburetor is that? Well, it's a Solex, so what is this thing? 30 pick. 30 pick, okay. Yeah. So that should be fine, right? Yeah. It's bigger than the carburetor that was on there, I do believe. Yeah, this is a... The only thing we'll run into is uh This is a 28 pick. Uh, the 12 volt stuff on it. Like the choke. Oh, gotcha. The idle circuit. Yep. But we should be able to start it. It's looking good. It's getting there, buddy. More pieces here and there. Need to get those uh, fan housing pieces and put those in the uh, fan housing so we can put our wires in there. Get some sheet metal on there. We got our muffler on. And uh, next, we're going to pull it out of the stand and put the flywheel on. Check the inplay. I had to put the old Solex carburetor on there. Have a little linkage issue with the other carb. So, we'll see how this works, being that it's a 12 volt idle solenoid. I wired it up to the coil. We'll see how it works. All right, man, we got that on there. It's a little bent up. Yeah, it was in pretty bad shape. Uh, I'm gonna try to find another one. I just want the seal to fit to it. So that's yeah. all that matters. I've been keeping an eye out to see if I can find another one to like this. If you guys see one, let me know. I'll yeah. pick it up. Non-fresh air. I think you can buy those new. Can you? Yeah, they won't fit very well, but you can get them. Now I'll have to go on out of the stand. I'm ready to move this to the floor whenever you're ready. All right, let's do it. We're just going right on the floor here, right here. So we put the flywheel on. Uh, grab, grab it here. Okay. Yeah. You watch your hands when you set them up for down. Hand out. Okay. And then, uh, you got some of those metal shims. I think we got sort of a selection of them. You can get those together for them so I can measure them. Yep. Here. 
perfect. So that's that. This has to be really clean on these. That don't go in there. Get rid of these paper. Throw it away, boys. Causes you nothing but heartache. And uh, one other thing uh, about the sealer on the case. Mm -hmm. Volkswagen did not put any sealer on the case house from the factory. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, they never had sealer. But uh, after you rebuild them and they get worn, you know, you have to put some sealer on them. Gotcha. But from the factory, there would have never been any sealer. Because they were just machined and they were machine, tight. Machine, not perfect, yeah. Because I mean, the surface was so good. So we got that clean. We have our uh, 10 thousandths shen there. And we get our red flywheel seal out. I'd be surprised if that works, but we'll try it. Right. Normally, the magic number is 27. Okay. Just so you know. Where are we at right now? Almost 40. Wow. Seems like an excessive amount, but hmm. well, uh, I like to see what you know what you have from the start there. So. I put a little lube on that so it slides in nice. Doesn't tear the seal. Let's lube it up. that Make sure that's all in because we don't get it all in, it will leak. It's a nice little tool we got there. Yep, it's a, I believe it's an MP. I mean, it's a nice seal tool, it works quite well. You know, it's handy for putting in the flywheel seals. Yeah, that's in all the way. You don't have it in, and you just put it flush to here, the flywheel will tear the seal. Gotcha. Okay, we gotta clean this up a little bit. It's all rusty there.
she is together. Freaking good, man. What is it you're looking for here? Uh, four, four to seven, you know, is the preferred. Set it on zero. No, we'll pull it. Here we got five, dude. It's golden. Nice. Golden. Very cool. I'm gonna hand me that uh, abrasive tool. Clean, please. Or carburetor cleaner. That uh, big fan. You're not going to make me the bad guy, no way, man. No. <laughs> nope. It's all good. Live and learn, live and learn. That's all we can do, man. We all learn lessons. I feel like this isn't right. So I saw it. Yes. 
It's like putting a puzzle together. All right, guys, you ready to do this? Yep. Ready to give it a try. Let's do it. Cross your fingers. <laughs> I know we are. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm excited, man. All right, man, push the button. Let's see if we can get some gas up in the carburetor. I put a little in there, so it might fire up. Okay. Ready? Yep. Hang on. Go ahead. Get my D5W. All right, you ready? No. Going the carburetor up. <laughs> Getting excited, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty excited. All right, go ahead. All right. We have it uh, pretty much sorted out, I think. Just ready to go home. Uh, we started with the uh, carburetor that you see there, and then we had to take that back off and do a little work on that. We uh, unfreed the uh, needle and seat, we got that working, and we put our other distributor back in there, which seems to be working good. We had to end up changing the oil cooler out. We, uh, Changed the seal several times thinking it was the seals, but then we just went ahead and uh, put another cooler on it and it seemed to eliminate our problem. So we seem to be good now. We yeah. readjusted the valves, everything looked good, and uh, it's running pretty good. We're going to fire it up for you guys. Let's see what you think. Should make Rusty happy. Yeah, sounds good, man. Really good. Making me look bad. <laughs> yeah, I like looking back there and seeing no oil. That's good. Yeah. We can change the oil cooler seals real fast now, though. Yeah, we're pretty good at it. We're good at that. We're real proficient <laughs> at that. It looks good, man. Yeah, it does. I think we got to put it in the bus now. It looks awesome. Thank you. It was Very fun. good. Run it smooth. Silky smooth. So there we have it. The 40 horse is complete. Yes, sir. So. Finally. We didn't put a cam in it, but we did do a couple of little tricks to make it zing up a little bit. You know? Yeah. We polished the crank, polished the uh, rods, the beams on the rods, pen fitted the uh, piston pens so they float nice. And uh, it's a pretty sweet motor, man. Seems yeah. to be running real cool. Seems to be happy. Not burning the paint off the exhaust or anything. That's yeah, running smooth. So we'll get that thing put in the bus and then we'll move on to the Gia or the Porsche, whatever we're going to work on next. <laughs> Something. Yeah. So I'm ready. I think Thank this you, sir. Right. Put this in your living room or whatever. Use it for some furniture until you get it in the bus. I could use it for a heater right now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's a little cold in here. I see my breath. So, oh, I mean, yeah. we've been working pretty hard. It's not you know, cold at the moment, but I'm sure as soon as we stop, we'll feel it. Oh, yeah. But. I'm happy with the way it came out. Hopefully you get some good service out of it. Oh, yeah, that's going to be awesome. I can't wait to get in Rusty and drive it down the road. It's going to be sweet. Yep, so everything looks good. Got a new generator on there, a new carburetor, rebuilt distributor, brand new coil, powder-coated sheet metal. You got a used fan and a used cooler. He had a nice powder-coated fan, but it was bent. I don't know if it got bent in the powder-coating process heating it up or what but 
So we had a few components we had to uh, replace. I've named this one Christine. <laughs> it's, uh, it's got a little uh, mind of its own. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It fought us all the way. It did fight us a little bit. Yeah. You know, but it's worth it in the end. I think it's solid piece now. So. Oh, I got five more horsepower now with that baby. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds good, man. Yeah, it does. Sounds happy now. It's coming back to idle real nice. Idle and smooth. Yeah. Really good. Yeah, buddy. Real nice. Hardly making any heat at all. It's running really cool. I was a little concerned on it, you know, with the compression. I left the compression high. So yeah. You don't want to take too much compression out of these because they only have 40 horsepower to begin with, and a lot of that comes from the uh, compression. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it, Darren. Yep. It's looking good. Yeah, buddy.